Welcome to Makers Talks. This is a space that we have for uh, creatives, people in our business, people in our world to have conversations about everything that we do. My name is Kerry Lofton. I'm a director and a creator. And today I'm joined by Alex, who's an amazing director and DP. Thank you so much for having me. I'm yeah. honored to be here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm honored to have you. Like when it comes to, uh, of course, I have many inspirations as far as like online and things like that. But like you're one of the the top at the top. I'm feel Likewise. Like I'm, I appreciate Likewise. It. The love is mutual. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. I feel like I'm always like anytime you're posting anything, I feel like I'm always like bookmarking it, saving it, liking oh, I appreciate it, uh, that. using it as like inspiration. So, uh, yeah. But for the people who are not aware of who you are, what you've done, like tell us a little bit about you, your background, how you started. Yeah. So. I'm Alex Tejas. I am here from Dallas, Texas, local to Dallas. And I started, man, I started when I was like nine years old, just like filming things of like my dogs all the way fast forward to today. I'm like working with Michael Phelps, working with Whoop, working with Nike, working with Our Place. A lot of like really incredible, great clients that um, I just enjoy. That effect, the fact that I got to like take such a small passion of mine that started with like filming my dog into now these like big big time sets yeah 13 year old me is is pretty proud and pretty excited what i'm doing i love that so you knew pretty early that this is what you wanted to do yeah and i got lucky because i mean when you when you re rewind all the way back to then like instagram didn't exist youtube wasn't what it is today like youtube was like cat videos you know like <laughs> none of this world was what it what it was but i loved making videos i didn't know what that was going to be at the at that time it was like either you're making a Hollywood movie or nothing, you know? And so shout out to like Instagram and Netflix and streaming platforms that have like expanded what making videos can really mean yeah. for somebody. Um, but I knew at that age, like, this is what I like and I'm gonna find a way to make this my thing. And so fast forward, here we are. And we've got multiple ways in order to make videos and I'm just along for the ride for it. Yeah, what a time. I like, the thing about it is it's, it's easier than ever now, right? Cause like, I don't know about you, like what was what was the first camera? Like when you were filming dog videos, what was the first camera you Man, my out? first camera was a flip camera. Do you remember those? <laughs> I remember with the, the USB stick yep, popped you, out like, the side. Flipped on the yeah, side. Yeah. It was like a whole gadget. <laughs> I saved every single penny for that little camera. Yeah. Um, and that was my first one. And that was like, that was huge for me. And I, then I graduated from that to a Canon Mark IV, 5D Mark IV. Yeah. And that didn't have autofocus. Um, so I like really mastered the like manual yeah. focus capabilities in that. But that was my like first real camera of like, hey, I'm taking this serious and I'm gonna get clients and like do this as a career. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think we live in such a time where like there's so much more access to things that help us, you know, going back to when you started, when I started, I'm 12 years in now, like. yeah an HD camera, you know, there was no 4K. It was, no. 10, you were trying to get to 720 and 1080, yeah. <laughs> like, and those cameras were, like, cost thousands of dollars. Yeah. And now, like, you have that same technology in your pocket and it's even better. So, like, talk to me a little bit about, like, how your journey progressed um, when you making dog videos. Yeah. Decided that this is something that you were interested in. How did that, like, progress? Did you, you know, did you go to school for it? Did you do it throughout high school? Tell me about like how you got to where you are today. Yeah. So my story is a little bit more traditional. Um, I have parents who are both engineers. So the idea of like going to art school or not going to school at all was like a definite no. Like I will be going to school whether my parents or not like wanted me like I, it was an, it was a, I absolutely had to go to school. So I went to school for film. Don't necessarily think you need to do that. Um, but I'm grateful for the opportunity that I did. And after that, I went straight to New York and got my first like in-house job. Um, at that time, freelance was definitely like a thing people were doing. However, again, back to like having engineering parents, they like really ingrained in me like the need for comfort and stability and something secure and the freelance world definitely was not that um and so i took that approach of working in-house at a few different companies with the intention of like okay i'm gonna work at this place and i'm gonna like form connections and relationships with these people at these places so that maybe in the future maybe five years down the line i'll go freelance and i'll have these relationships with these people that i then can reconnect with whenever i am in the freelance world and they can bring me on freelance. So that's kind of like the quick spark note version of how I went from like making videos of my dogs to now doing this full time on my own. Cool. Where'd you go to school? 
I went to Florida State. Florida Go State. Knowles. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. My, one of my good friends, she was uh she spent some time at Florida State. Oh yeah. So, like she talks about it. She had a great time down yeah, there. Yeah, it's, so. it's Tallahassee is something else, I'll tell yeah, you that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so uh so tell me a little bit about like did you set out like, all right, like I'm going to go to New York and I'm going to be a creator or did it just kind of like, like, tell me a little bit about going from school, graduating, you now have this film degree, yeah. something that you feel like you probably really didn't even need at the yeah. time, but like you have this, like, what was that like job search process like? Was it like, did it fall into your lap? Did you take, like, did it take some time for you to get to where you are? Because that's a dream for a lot of people, I know. right? Like, you talk to a lot of people, they either want to go to New York or they want to go to L.A. Like, sure. how did you end up there essentially living what some people would see as the dream? Sure. Funny enough, I, so starting, once Instagram came out, I think I was in high school when that happened. I don't really remember. But I started using Instagram as a platform mm -hmm. to post my work. Like, back in the day, you wouldn't even know, like, who was behind this. I was just posting my videos, so yeah. you wouldn't know if I was in Texas, you wouldn't know if I was a female, like you yeah. wouldn't know anything about me. And I would just post my work and that continued all the way throughout college. And someone in New York found my Instagram wow. and DM'd me and said, hey, I love your work, would love to like have you on a shoot of ours. Wow. And I was like, and this was a director living in New York who worked at an agency. And I was like, well, funny enough, I'm actually only like 19 years old and I need an internship to like complete my program yeah. would it be cool if i came out for an internship and he was like absolutely win-win like we get to have you for free basically <laughs> um and we get to like fulfill this like i wanted to work with you it's so cool yeah. let's do it so i went out there for a summer um for a summer internship and that actually turned into a job so i'm like my i am such a believer in not just doing passion projects but like sharing it and promoting it and like posting it on your socials because you never know who's coming across your socials. Like mm -hmm. you never know who's coming to that page to see that and be like, yeah. oh, that was really dope. Like I could see my brand or my company or this project or whatever it is yeah. that they have going on in their lives. Like I can see elements of that in this passion project you just made. And I would love to like work with you on this thing that I have going on. So yeah. that's how I, I turned it into reality for me. It was just consistently posting my work and the right person at the right time saw it and I got a job that way. That's such a good point because I don't think people think enough about what their social presence is in our world as like creators, photographers, those sorts of things. Like, yeah. I can't tell you the amount of people that I've like, oh, some, even if somebody like recommended them to me, like, oh, you should get this person on this project. And then I go to their page and it's like pictures of what they ate for dinner, yep. or pictures of their kids. And like, I can't, like, sure, you can put a website link in your bio, but like, I feel like that's such a huge tip for people is like to, if you want to post that stuff, get a personal page or something like that. Because like I have moved on to the next person on my list and like not hired and you can call it shallow, you can call it whatever you want. But like when we're in the thick of trying to hire for a project and we need a certain person or we need a certain thing, we don't have time to scroll through, you know, however long through somebody's Instagram to find their work. So like, number one, commending you for being like on the forefront of that, like yeah, posting your work you. yeah. because it obviously got you a job. But like just now, like as advice and tips to other creators is like, be aware of like what you're posting on your social media because you never know who's looking and want to reach out to like hire you. So 100%. And I think it for me, the simple way I put it for people is like, if I tell you like, man, I love dogs. I'm obsessed with dogs. They're my favorite thing. Yeah. And then you go to my Instagram and you don't see one dog in sight. It's a little like, are you yeah. fine on me right now? Like, do you, are you sure you like, like, that's cool. But like, yeah. I don't see dogs. You don't have a dog. I don't see one on your Instagram. You never post about dogs. Yeah. So like, if you really, I mean, this is a career where you truly have to be passionate about it. It's got to be something that you love to do as a hobby, as well as your full-time job. Yeah. Like that's the blessing in what we do is like, we've turned our hobby into a career. Mm -hmm. And if it's nowhere to be seen on your socials, like you said, you're posting your avocado toast, which is cool. <laughs> we love avocado toast, but like you're posting everything but your work. Yeah. It's a bit confusing off first glance if someone's trying to hire you because it's like, well, yeah. I don't know if they actually like are doing this for real, for real. Or yeah. if, like maybe they're just getting started. Like you start asking questions yeah. and you want someone to come to your socials and have no questions. They know yeah. exactly what you do, what you're about and what type of project you can, you can accomplish. Yeah, absolutely. So you're in New York. You're working, you're living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> and then you decide that it's no longer the dream, right? What do you, yeah. you, you know, you're, you're kind of 
Are you like, as you're working, are you one foot in and freelance, one foot not? Like, how, how's that, like, what's that dynamic like? Yeah, so I, I definitely have always done freelance on the side. Um, I think something we, we talked about is like, as creatives, you're always wanting to fill your cup up in multiple ways in one. I think it's hard to say that like, just working on this one brand and this one project forever would be fulfilling. So I enjoyed my jobs that I had, but you know, I would get hit up to do other freelance work and that was always appetizing and like keep kept my creative wheels turning. So I would always do freelance jobs on the side. Um, I called in sick a few times maybe to be like, hey, sorry, I can't come into work because I would have a, have a shoot. Um, <laughs> And the thing is, is I think everyone did that, right? Like we don't talk about it. You keep it under the table. You want to make sure you keep your main in-house job. Like yeah. you want to respect them and give them your time and give them your effort. Um, but if you can juggle the the two, why not? So I, I would always do freelance on the side. And then like most people who go from that transition of like working in-house freelance just one day, it was like, I guess I'm going to do freelance full time. It's a lot easier said that way than done. Um, but that day did come for me where I took that leap of faith of like, cool, let's run it and rock the freelance life and see, see what this side is looking like. And I haven't turned back. <laughs> what, uh, what do you feel like motivated that? Cause I feel like I talk to people all the time and that's, I feel like that's one of the main questions I get is like, how do I get from that? Whether they're like either working a full-time job, maybe they're working a full-time job in production or in their field. They might be like a photographer or editor for like a company. They're just not doing it on their terms. And I yeah. always get people who are like, how do I get to like where you are, where it's like you're doing freelance, you're running a company. Like, and I always like ask them like, well, what's the motivation? For some it's money. They realize like I could be making, you know, making here and I could be making this. For some it's, they want to work on a certain kind of project and like creatively they're suffering a little bit. Mm -hmm. But like, what do you feel like was the push that took you from like, here's a job that I'm at. This is awesome. I'm working in New York and I'm kind of doing what I want to do to like, maybe there's more for me. What do you feel like motivated your decision the most? For me, I would say that it's like, it was the constant feeling of not having control of my ceiling. And that could mean in a lot of the ways you just mentioned in money and projects and everything. But I think at some point it started getting a bit frustrating, even the simple, the simplicity of like calling in to say like, hey, I can't come into work because I'm sick, but in reality, I'm gonna go shoot this other project. Yeah. Like I wish I could, ju could have just been transparent with my employer and they would have supported that. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, like I, this is a great opportunity for me. And I wish my employer would agree with that and like yeah. co-sign that and be like, yeah, definitely go. Yeah. I understand why the employer wouldn't. Like they want to feel like, hey, I've got, you know, we're paying you a salary. Like we have 100% of your time. So I understand that side of it. But that was ultimately what pushed me was like, I want to be more in control of what my ceiling is and what my opportunity is. And that of course would result in what my salary is, what my budget is, what kind of projects I'm working on, et cetera. Um, so I would say that that's like, that was my, my big push was, okay, now I'm in the driver's seat and I get to control what this, what is my career? What is this next path for me? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that because there's a lot of people who like want to make that decision, but they just, they don't really know where to start. And you said something interesting to me when we were talking uh, about like how your freelance career went yeah. when you first started. Like, yeah. are you comfortable sharing that as far yeah. as like how you were able to make that jump in salary? Yeah, so, and I would say too, before I get there was, I think a lot of people say like, oh, just, you know, just make the leap of faith. And, yeah. and I think, thankfully my parents did have that engineering background of like wanting me and had that perspective of like, Alex, you need something secure and stable mm -hmm. and like, that was ingrained in me that I didn't just like all of a sudden one day quit my job and go freelance. Like I had savings, I had a backup plan. Like I had things put in place that if it didn't work out, I would go right back to getting a job. So with that in mind that like, okay, cool, I'm gonna take the leap and see what this freelance world was. My main goal that year was, okay, if I can make the same amount that I'm making salary wise at my in-house job, then cool, this is the way I got my foot on the gas, we're gonna run it. Mm -hmm. And that first year I made three times my salary. And I wasn't making like a salary that, you know, I, this was already a few years into my yeah. career in New York and New York does pay a bit more. So my initial salary was in that six figure range yeah. that I was trying to match and I three X'd it. And that to me, it wasn't like a, 
wasn't a number thing. Like, yes, that's great. And it was a huge blessing. And like, I'm so grateful for the amount of opportunities I had to be able to reach that goal. But it was more so just like, as soon as I hit it in the first few months of that six figure cap, I was like, this that's cool. But like, again, my ceiling is that I get to work on more projects and what do I want to work on? And how do I want to grow? Like what things do I want to get better in? And that would drive me way more than just like, cool, I made the money, so I guess I could take the rest of the year just a little yeah, vacation. Like, yeah. no, like when you go freelance, you're working 10 times harder than you ever had before. And it's not for a money thing. It's not for, it's not for anything other than like, back to what I said initially, like I've got a passion for this. Yeah. And that will show in the results. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And you also get to pay more taxes on that money. You do yeah. also get to pay more taxes. <laughs> Shout out to the tax Oh master. man, if you catch me around oh. like April, it's funny. I talked to somebody and they were like, uh, it was like, I was like the day, tax deadline day, I was doing my taxes. Yeah. And they're like, you waited this long? Like, I filed mine soon. And I was like, yeah, like, that's because you get a refund. Like, yeah. man, you got to pay. You wait until the last, last you might second. even file an extension. So, Well, like, now I'm on the quarterly game, which is also, like, now I'm feeling yeah. the hit, like, every quarter. That's, uh, I, I need to do that. I keep saying I'm going to do that. And I've already, like, passed up two quarters. So, like, yeah. next year in April, like, <laughs> it's gonna be somebody a send me a Starbucks gift card. Yeah, for gonna real. Be, I'm going to be struggling. But for real. So talk, talk a little bit about, because, like, that, I, I understand being, um, I mean, I've seen your career progress just because I followed you for quite some time on social yeah. media. And I've kind of seen you go from the kind of one woman band projects where you're kind of doing everything. And obviously those projects, because you're not tripling your salary, making $500 here, $500 no. there. Like you have, you've got to get to a point to where you're getting bigger budgets and you're able to then not only make more money, but bring on more people to make a better product. Like, yeah. but I can understand how hard it, it feels, even when you're in it to go from, Man, everybody that's calling me, all they got is 500 bucks. How do I get to where I'm trying to be with that? And like now all of a sudden you're working with Nike and Michael Phelps and PGA and all these amazing brands that are paying you to yeah. where you can make it worth your time. You're bringing in more money, but you're also getting bigger budgets to work on better projects. Like I understand how that can feel like such a leap and how do I get from there from here to there. Yeah. Talk can you talk a little bit about like how you went about that first year of freelance and being able to jump up in your salary and like finding clients and yeah. finding people that were going to like pay you your worth. Yeah. So I think it's like a balance, right? Like I think it's totally okay to say yes, especially when you're first starting out. It's totally fine to say yes to those smaller quick hits of cash. Like mm -hmm. we got to keep the lights on, let's be realistic. Yeah. However, there are opportunities like I think we're taking a step back and taking a breather when somebody asks like, hey, this is my budget, this is my idea. Man, there's so much value in as a creative receiving what the ask is, taking a breather and being like, you know what would make this even better is if we did X, Y, or Z. And in order to achieve X, Y, or Z, we need this type of money and this type of gear and this type of crew. Yeah. And it is your responsibility. Like our clients are coming to us because we're the professionals. So they're coming to us saying like, hey, this is what I've got in mind. And I'm sure it's already like in a great spot. Sometimes it's maybe not in a great spot and you got a lot more work to do, <laughs> but I'm sure it's in a like somewhat developed spot where you as a creative could take that and easily be like, cool, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Or if you do, like you're saying, if you're wanting to reach those bigger projects and make these bigger productions, you could receive that initial brief and that initial ask and concept with them out of just your own time, your own, your own like pocket, like, mm -hmm. Hey, this is if we were to invest a little bit more and you, you did X, Y, and Z, we could make this 10 times better. Yeah. And it'll be way more valuable for you. It'll last you way longer. Like there's so much value that the client can gain out of that. Yeah. But that has to come from you being able to see that vision and clearly communicate that to the client. Yeah. So I would say that that was a big thing that I did in my first and I I did that naturally, not even knowing I was doing that, just because I am a vision type of person where like I see something and I automatically, I'm trying to think of how much can we squeeze out of this to make this the best possible way. Yeah. And I know I'm not the best at everything. So I'm gonna be the first one to be like, cool, I'd rather take a cut from my chunk of this budget you're working with to bring on X set designer, to bring on X DP. Like I'm, I'm willing to bring the crew out so that we can make this yeah. what it needs to be. 
And the result of that usually is the client sees that, sees that how much you're caring for their baby, mm -hmm. that they're gonna bring you back for the second time around and they know then what type of budget they need to achieve yeah. what, they, what they got the first time. Mm -hmm. So I think it really is a lot of, I don't think a lot of creatives realize how much really the ball is in their court to mm -hmm. help teach and guide their client yeah. of what is necessary to achieve the vision that they're really trying to achieve. That's such a good point because I think it is easy when you know, everything's moving lightning fast from somebody reaching out saying, hey, I want to work with you to yeah. saying, this is what I want to do. And the next thing you know, you just feel like you blink and you got a camera in your hand and you're on set, you're creating. But like, we do forget sometimes in that kind of blitzkrieg of things of like, like, we are makers. Like, and if somebody's bringing you something, you have the ability to take and mold and shape that into something else, even if it's not what they initially thought, because that's why they're coming to you, right? right. Like they're coming to you sometimes with a half idea, sometimes with it 90% there, but like, that's really our job. It's not knowing how to set a camera, or set a light or edit a video. It's really our job on like getting the vision across the finish line, totally. no matter what that looks like. So I think that's such a, a good point. And I think that's something that like, is a reminder that we all need to make sure that we're not just thinking about like the X's and O's when it comes to like, I'm gonna get the best camera, I'm gonna learn how to set it up, or I'm gonna get the best lens or those sorts of things. But like really thinking like how we can be about like our business, you know yeah. what I mean? Because it is, it is a, it is customer service, it is business no matter what you're doing. So I think that's obviously a testament to the success that you had, yeah. the success that you, the success that you've experienced like early on in your career. So I just like, I commend you for that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, of course. So like tell me like how uh how much of a um like how much was a a culture shock was it going from like smaller clients where you're not maybe not having like such a big budget to like now okay, cool. I'm on a call with like Nike. I'm on a call with like PGA. Like what did you feel like you had to bring more to the table in regards to like being in those rooms and realizing like okay, this is a step up. This is different. Yeah. I, the big thing is just confidence and like trusting my gut and speaking, speaking with confidence and speaking firmly on like, hey, this is what I believe should be done. But also confidence in my weaknesses as well and speaking to that too and saying like, hey, I'm, I'm not capable of that, but I think we should outsource this to X, Y, Z. Um, because I think if, if, I think it's naive to think that you can do it all. And people at that level, at the Nikes, at the PGAs, at like, they themselves are big machines. Like they know that one person can't do it all. <laughs> so I think they even gain more respect for you when they realize that you are able to differentiate, hey, this I can do, this I can't, but we should do it this way so that we can achieve the dream. Like start to problem solve of how can we still achieve what they're wanting to do, mm -hmm. but don't like just take it in and say yes to everything, yes to everything. And then behind closed doors, you're freaking out because you just agreed to something that you have no idea how to yeah. do. Yeah. So I think that confidence in both your strengths and weaknesses is what I've realized has really shown up in those bigger rooms. Um, that I think sometimes on those smaller projects, like because they're small, the the client is just happy the fact that they like got an image in return. You know, mm -hmm. like they're just like, cool, we got something. Yeah. So like, wait, like great, I'm happy, I'm satisfied. Whereas in those bigger rooms, there's a lot more at stake. There's a lot yeah. more on the table that you don't want to mess with. Yeah. That you need to be. Uh, confident and transparent with what to expect and, and what the game plan is going to be. Yeah, because I think there's this misconception that like when you start to work on bigger projects that like the responsibilities are lessened. And in a way it is because yeah. you do, if you have a bigger budget, you can then hire more people who can focus on lighting, focus on audio, sure. focus on, you know, storyboarding or whatever, all the things like focus on hiring people. But that doesn't like lessen, you know what I'm saying? Like our responsibilities yeah. at all. Like if anything, they're heightened because, you know, it's that meme that they say like, oh, $500 client, <laughs> you know, they make all these excuses on sending a payment. But then when it's a six figure client, they just send the money. Like right. that's, I, I, that's not true. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's honestly like legal holds up a lot of that bigger money anyway. Yeah. Like, you know, and wait till we start talking about like net 90 and all that stuff. So like, Man. it's one of those things where it's like, I think people remember like, what comes with that level of totally. responsibility because it looks great. It looks great to say, yeah, man, I just got done shooting a project with Nike or whatever, but mm -hmm. what went on behind the scenes right. and what, uh, what level that did you shoulder? So that's- Well, and I, I think a lot of that confidence comes from a lot of those responsibilities. So like 
on a shoot that's a lot smaller, maybe you're not necessarily doing a location scout. Maybe you're not doing a storyboard. You're not doing a shot list. Like y'all are just kind of showing up and you're like, let's see what we can get. Let's mm -hmm. have some fun. Yeah. But on those bigger projects, so much, there's so many more steps in the process that if done correctly and done as a team, you're, everyone, including yourself, will have the confidence that yeah. we're gonna get what we need. But it is a lot more steps to the process um, yeah. that I personally love. Like I, I geek out over a location scout, over a tech scout, over storyboarding. Like that to me makes me feel confident that I'm showing up that day and I know exactly what this client wants and I know exactly how we're gonna get there. Yeah, that's awesome. So if I just got started in, you know, video production and I'm looking yeah. at your work and I'm like, man, I see Alex is, she's posting all this amazing work. Yeah. But like, I have no idea how to get from like A to B. I can't even hit on sneakers, let alone like <laughs> get in a room with Nike to, to produce a yeah. video for them. Like, where would you recommend that I start? What would be a good place for me to start, to start working towards? Obviously, there's nothing that can replace your experience, right? Like, sure. not even just talking about school, but just the hands-on experience that you've had. You've been doing this for how long? I mean, I guess technically since I was nine, I'm 28 now. So yeah, what does so, that mean? so you know what I mean? Like, you you are well into your 10,000 hours. Yeah. Like, but... So there's nothing that can replace that, but what could a, what could a person do if they're just like starting from square one? How can they start to make a push towards getting to some of the amazing things you've done? I mean, back to how I first got into it. I'm a huge believer in a passion project. And I know that's so cliche and everyone's like, do the spec work, do the passion project, et cetera. But how can you, in back to like my analogy of dogs, like how can you expect anyone to believe that you can do a video if you have no work to show for it. So let's say you're, I, I hear a lot of people, they get stuck like, man, I'm just stuck in the corporate world. And like, I'm just shooting corporate interviews left and right, left and right. I would love to get more into like the more campaign branded work, which is a lot of work that I do. Get some friends or put out a Craigslist posting, like do something to find some talent that like you could go shoot that spec work for and invest in yourself. Like, don't think that that's just gonna be free 99. Like mm -hmm. you have 200, 300, 500 bucks to throw down pay for a talent, maybe you rent a piece of gear that you know will help, like, help lift the production quality and create that spec piece that's a 15, 20, 30 second piece mm -hmm. that you can have on your socials. Maybe even you pitch that to the client you're trying to work with. I think it's best to not just create a spec piece like in the, in the abyss and just be like, oh, I like <laughs> sports, so I'm just gonna make something. Like, yeah. have a target in mind. Like if, the, if you wanna work with Nike, research Nike and see what kind of stuff do they make? Do you see a hole in something that they're doing? Do you mm -hmm. see something that you could pitch to them yeah. that you then go and make and, and send it to somebody? Like send it to someone at their at Nike. Now the next question is, is like, well, I don't know anybody at Nike, so how do I do that? And that goes back to like the classic 101 of networking. Yeah. Personally, I'm not a big like traditional networker. I think a lot of creatives are introverts and like the idea of showing up and networking. I don't know about you. Are you like an introvert or are you, you, you are pretty, I would say you're outgoing. My wife, my wife will argue you, me down. She thinks I'm an extrovert. I'm an introvert yeah. for real. Like I catch me holding up the wall at a party. Yeah. <laughs> catch me slinking away to the bathroom right. whenever I get a chance. I, yeah, it, it just, me I, too. I can work at it, but like, it's something that like, I have to work really hard because me too. my cup gets like emptied really fast. Same. Like, and, and I would say like, I, I'm not, I'm the same exact way. And for me, the when I hear people say networking, I'm like, I'm not about to go to like this bar to like talk to people or like this event and talk to, like, that's just not me. Yeah. But what is me is if I am on a, sh on a set or if I am at a coffee shop or if I am in an environment that somebody chalks up a conversation with me or like we're in an environment that I feel comfortable, I'm going to start talking about what I love, which is making videos. Yeah. I love this, I love what I do. Yeah. And I'm gonna start talking about it, I'm gonna be a human with you first. And I'm pretty confident, just based on my own experience, like that will turn into something for yeah. you. Like I was just at a coffee shop before this and was editing something and the person next to me was like, oh, like are you working in Premiere? And I, I'm not talking about my job at all. I yeah. shifted the conversation away from the project I was working on. But because we connected on a human to human level about something totally different, yeah. He gave me his card and we chopped it up and like, who knows what that'll be? Yeah. Like who knows where that'll, but I'm not talking with someone with like the hopes of like, yeah. what are you gonna give me? Like, yeah. what are we gonna get out of this? Like Absolutely. it's more so of like, you're a human, I'm a human, that I can do. But mm -hmm. the idea of the networking of like, 
I this is what I can offer you for this. Pro- yeah. Like we're not machines. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. that for me has helped me with the idea of networking and like getting to know people in this industry, maybe at a slower pace. Like maybe mm-hmm. if I was that like machine that was like, this is what I can offer you. Yeah. Maybe I would get more, but how how I've approached it has been sustainable for me and fulfilling for me. Yeah, I think you you if, to your point. I think if you were like that, you'd get more. But I think they'd be like less genuine relationships. More transactional. You know what I'm because like yeah, because we all know like and social media makes it easier than ever to network because we don't always have to go to a bar or a coffee shop or yeah. an event to meet people. We can follow people. We can send them a DM and we have that kind of instant connection. Yeah. But that is something that I've seen where people are, you know, they start with the, how's it going, man? Like, you know, and like you just know they're coming with I something. Know. You know what I'm saying? And it's very like disingenuous. Yeah. Like it's Doesn't very feel like, good. yeah, exactly. Because it's like, I know you're only hitting me up because you saw I worked on this and you're trying to get there. And like, you don't, you don't know me. You don't know anything like about me you haven't yeah. tried to like connect with me on anything other than like and if I don't know you and there's no like it's like a bank right like it's like going opening up a bank like yeah I could walk into Chase and say I'm in here I'm talking to you but like if I haven't deposited any money I can't make a withdrawal and I right. feel like a lot of people look at networking that way is that like well I'm here I'm talking to you like I know you right you're working with Nike put your boy on like right. but if I haven't made any like deposits into you like why would I be able to make a withdrawal for something like that for you to be able to say you know what Carrie would be good on this project or 100%. you know what I have a client that Carrie like I could connect them with cuz I think they'd be good so like I think we lose all of that because again everything's so fast in our world yeah. we're just I'm gonna send this person a DM or I'm gonna reach out to this person and we're not even thinking about like the make, human. building like, a foundation yeah. with that person outside of what they could do for you. Because I think when you're first starting out, I, I mean, I was there. Like I was so hungry that I was like, I, yeah, I, I could understand the mentality of being just so hungry and being like, man, like I could do this for you. Like I would love to. Like if you're on a set, please. Like I would love to come out and like help yeah. you out and like. I understand that mentality, but I don't know about you. I've, I've had people who have approached me in that way, and I've never brought that person on. Yeah. Just because it's like, I, I don't, like you said, I don't know you. I don't know, like, y- you will be a representation of me if I bring you to set. Yeah. And I think a different way to approach that, I think it's good to reach out and send the DMs and, like, support, but do it on a genuine one-to-one level. Yeah. Like, don't do it with the hopes that, oh, if I send them a DM, like maybe they'll bring me on set or maybe they'll yeah. hire me for X, Y, Z. Just do it strictly because yeah. you're a human that is loving and supporting what another human is doing yeah. and let that blossom naturally. Absolutely. Don't try to force it to try to like get your reward out of it. Absolutely. You said something that hit the nail on the head. I, I just, I really admire your, your business sense as well outside mm. of it because like you said, everybody's an extension of you. You know what I mean? And so that's again, a, a something that I just think needs to be harped on a lot more because, you know, there's something that like I say in my book about like pricing is like, I've seen people who are not so talented, but has the good business aspect of yeah. it. And I'm not saying you're not talented, no, but, but that like, is a thing. you could sell, they could sell yeah. not so talented, but then I've seen people who are the most talented people in the world, but they like neglect the business side of things. Yes. So like all that talent kind of goes to waste. So like, I just have such a respect for you because of like, you're thinking about these things and you've yeah. been thinking about these things and it shows because you've had success because you've been able to, to pair it because I know so many people who are super talented but they never post on their yeah. social channels they never talk to anybody they just kind of they get work here and there because cream always rises to the top but they mm-hmm. could be doing so much more but they're neglecting the business aspect totally. of it so I just hats off Thank to you, you. I want to give you your flowers that. for that so let's talk about like your processes now because uh, yeah. that's one of my favorite parts of following you is like you're very um you're always showing what you're doing whether you're in the gym, which yeah. is also like, I just got done a big production while I was traveling. And like, I found my way to these like gritty hotel gyms to work out. There and that's go. something that you always like show, which yeah. I appreciate. I'm like, yeah. in my mind, I'm like, Alex would be proud. But like, <laughs> you also really show your process, whether it's, you know, you're creating a deck or a treatment or yeah. you're prepping gear or you're packing for a trip. Talk to me a little bit about like what, drives you to want to like show that process um, yeah. and like what's the thought process behind that 
Honestly, I mean, to get real with you, like the main reason I do it, because I struggle with showing that, to mm -hmm. be honest. Like I'm not really somebody who wants to be on camera. Like doing this even is like, I, it's, a, it's like a struggle for me to, to do yeah. these types of things. But my main driving force is there's not many women in this space doing it. And growing up, I, it's not something I was like focused or zeroed in on of like, where are the ladies at? But definitely as I get more and more on these sets and get exposed more and more to this world, like I don't see many women doing it. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's the college version of me or even younger who probably wants to get into this world and is probably seeing the same thing because there still aren't really that many women. I even myself have a hard time finding peers and other women in the same space as me. Mm -hmm that um, it's important for me to just shine the light specifically for that reason of like, maybe there is a college version of me who sees me and follows me and is like, man, that's cool like that she's doing this and like I relate more with her than I do the 100, 200, 300 men that are doing it and showing it because <laughs> yeah. we got plenty of men doing yeah. it. Um, so that's my real motivation behind it is like just for that younger version of me to have somebody like me to look up to and, and to see like hey you can do it like it yeah. is definitely possible this is open for all i love that well i could speak for i'm sure a lot of people when i say you're not just inspiring uh women you're inspiring mm -hmm. all of us like but i'm sure that you're definitely hitting that goal and i'm sure i can't wait to see like the impact that you have on the upcoming generation as we just more and more people just start to get into this space and be able to do what they're able to do and having conversations like this yeah. to be able to foster those people and kind of pour gas on the fire of yeah. people. So I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you can do. Of course. Yeah. So question about you for your process, though. We want to talk yes. about this. AI. Yeah. How much? Because I see, I see uh, I've see. i personally used it a little bit on pre-production and yep. it's, it's kind of freaky. Like, <laughs> I've used it for uh, like scripts. I've yeah. used it for uh, one of the big things I found is I started using mid because I hate storyboarding because yeah. it's always I spend hours looking for the right imagery and like I've started using it for like storyboarding where I'll like yeah. type in a prompt and it's pretty it's pretty, it's pretty accurate. accurate. Like, yeah. have you gotten into like AI I at have. all? Oh okay. man, I so I'm terrible on like the copy side of things. Yeah, um, and writing things up and so I'm great at like brain dumping like hey this is the concept that I think it should be we should have something like this and like that but it's like really like slapped together like it's yeah. not formal or like in an yeah. eloquent way that I wanted to say <laughs> put that baby in AI man I sound like a million bucks like really? that thing will chug it out and I, I I'm a huge fan of AI I think huh. anyone who's like against AI to me I look at that as like people back in the day that were like against Google yeah. and like against Facebook and again like yeah. this is a new tool that Sure, could it be used for bad? Of course, everything can be used for bad. Everything has its negative sides to it. But if you find your, like, we still need a human to like input something yeah. into it. And so if you can get creative and figure out, okay, how am I gonna use this tool to my advantage? I'm here for it. Like it yeah. just only speeds up the process and makes things, in my opinion, 10 times better. Yeah. So why not? Yeah, and I think to your point too, I think, you know, because we kind of talked about this a little off camera about, you know, maybe some some of the, the younger generation that's coming into creative space. And like, I do feel like a lot of people are getting into creative work because uh, it looks cool. Maybe yeah. it's not necessarily a passion, but they see that they could work for somebody cool or do something cool. And that's kind of what the driving factor is. But like, I think the people who are in it and they realize it and this is their passion, they're not afraid of AI, right? Like yeah. they're looking at it as like, like you said, this is a tool that's gonna help us versus like the people who are intimidated are the people who are just kind of like surface level anyway, you know what yeah. I mean? So like, I'm all for it. Like, honestly, like if it could help me storyboard, like that's Let's the go. main thing. Yeah. So. I, I don't, I, I think that's, I think that's a great point. I think if you are afraid of it, I would maybe do some self-reflection and look internally mm -hmm. because I do think that's maybe something that like you're afraid that like like your your creative mind can't be replaced by anybody. Yeah. But if you feel like this AI thing will, maybe you need to develop the creative mind of yours a little bit more to like get to a level where you feel more confident and secure with that because AI is only here to help. Like yeah. AI can only take your creative ideas and just 10X it and make it so much better. So yeah. I'm I'm all, even the, like the simple things of like, I think the one that's going viral is like the podcast editor one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even something like that, like, sure, like it, it can chop it up 
very quickly for me. So like all podcast editors are now fired, <laughs> you would think. But like the podcast, a lot of podcasts are still like chopped up of like, okay, maybe we have this section start here because that's a better storytelling yeah, as yeah. humans. We didn't do the storytelling perfect, but in the edit, the editor could like rearrange that to make it better. Yeah. So like the podcast AI editor just made it easier to where you could start that creative process of like, okay, now how can we switch this around? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So I think in all elements of it, like AI is just going to benefit if you're able to still maintain your creative juice of like, okay, how can I make this more interesting and how can I use this to my advantage? We may edit this one with yeah. AI. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we'll hashtag it. So. Little do you know, we are AI. We're <laughs> right. not actually We're not here. actually here. We're, we're, you know, you never know. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, tell, tell everybody where they can keep up with your work. Yeah. Uh, where can they find you if they want to work with you? Yeah. Where can they where can they reach out to you? So you can reach out to me on my Instagram. It's it's Tez. That's my last name. I T S T E L L E Z. Or my website, my full government, Alexandra Awesome. Highly recommend checking out her work. Huge inspiration for me, and I'm sure for a lot of other people um, as they get to know her. Thank y'all so much for joining us for Makers Talks. We'll see you next time. Thank you.